Our lesson for January the 8th, 2017. Lesson 6 is taken from Unit 2, which is titled Praise from and for God's Creation. Our lesson title is Sing a New Song. The devotional reading for our lesson is taken from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 23 through 34. Our background scripture is from the book of Psalms, Psalms 96. And our printed text is also from Psalms 96, verses 1 through 6, and verses 10 through 13. And our key verse, O sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Psalms 96 and 1. As a result of studying this lesson, the student should be able to contemplate God's creation's testimony to the majesty of God. Experience awe in the presence of God's creation and praise God wholeheartedly in corporate and individual acts of worship. Sing a new song. Verses 1 and 2 of our lesson states, O sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Sing unto the Lord. As we look at this, you will notice that the word Lord is written in all capital letters. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which represents one of the special and significant names by which God revealed himself to the ancient Hebrew. Now, that name, which in Hebrew is, is Yahweh, which the English translator changed to Jehovah. Now, we have to understand that the name Jehovah is generally translated in most Bibles by the word Lord, as I stated earlier, all printed in all capital letters. We find in Exodus 6.6 6, where it states, As God was speaking unto Moses, saying, when he was getting ready to send Moses back to deliver the children of Israel out of captivity from Egypt, God said, Therefore say unto the Israelites, I am the Lord, capital letters, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. So now here we see that God is sending Moses back to the Israelites to tell him exactly who he is. Now we have to understand that even at that time, as, as we do today, that there is a polytheistic society. That is that people believe believed and believe in many different gods today. But God is being pacific about who he is. Now, even as in ancient even as in ancient times, we also today say, well, you might call God by one name, you might uh, 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 believe in a higher being or or you can accept him as who you might think he is. You might say that that, that he's a uh, uh, Jehovah or Jesus and, and I might say that that, that he's Buddha or, 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 or whoever. But we have to be pacific. This psalm is telling us to sing unto who? Jehovah. We have to be pacific about who God is. And we have to understand this that the primary meaning of the name 
Jehovah or Lord in all caps is the self-existent one. He that is who he is. Therefore, the eternal I am. He is God all by himself. Now, as we study the scriptures, it is significant that the first appearance of the name Jehovah in scriptures followed after the sin of man. Okay, after the creation of man. Jehovah or Lord is distinctly the redemptive name of God. When sin entered the world and man's redemption became necessary, it was Jehovah Elohim who sought the sinning one and clothed him with coats of skin. Genesis 3.21 states, The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. The Lord God. Now, in Genesis 1, 1 it says, In the beginning, God. In, in the beginning, in the Hebrew, Elohim. But here, in, in, in the third chapter, is Jehovah Elohim. The Lord God made clothes for skins for Adam and his wife in, in his redemptive act for mankind. Now, Jehovah or Lord is also distinctly the name of God in covenant with Israel. That, that God has made a covenant with the nation Israel. He had called Israel out for a purpose that Israel would be a witness to the rest of the, all mankind that, that he was the only true and living God and that they would be a witness for him and that he made a covenant and agreement with them for them to be his witness. Exodus 19 and, uh, and verses, chapter 19 and verses 3 through 5 states, then Moses went up to God, and the Lord, that is Jehovah, called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles, wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant then out of all nations all the nations you will be my treasured possession although the whole earth is mine. And so here we see that God had made a covenant Jehovah the covenant-keeping God had made a covenant with Israel. And so now, here in our lesson, they are being pacific about who they are worshiping. It says, sing unto who? Sing unto Jehovah. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Not only to the nation Israel, but to, to all the earth or to sing to the Lord God. To sing unto him all nations. All people have a special, have occasion to bless his holy name, to praise him for what he has done and what he is still doing in the interest of all mankind. God created the heaven and the earth. God allows the, the rain to fall. God allows and produces the plants and the crops to grow. And so all mankind, whether he realizes it or not, need to praise God for what he has got. All mankind need to realize it, that, that, that God's mercy is extended day to day. Even though many of us have not, given our life to him. But God, in his mercy, has given us another day and an opportunity that, that, that he might be able to draw 
mankind unto him and to redeem man come from his sins. And so we are to, to, to let the whole earth, not the Jews only, but all the earth, all that are redeemed from the earth, that we as Christians also, that we are, are to give praise, a new song every day to God for his salvation. That, and, and the subject matter of the things that we praise God for is not so much about material blessings, not so much about the things that we have, houses and land and, 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 and wealth, but we, the, the subject matter of our song should be that of his salvation. The so great a salvation which was attained by the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that though we were estranged from God, that because of sin, that the Lord Jesus Christ came and paid a debt that we could not pay. And that we have been reconciled back to God through the cross of Jesus Christ. And that though, though we was unworthy and didn't deserve it and didn't work for it, but, but God who is rich in mercy and because of his great love with which he loved us, that Christ died for us. This should be the subject of our song daily. How, how, how that, the, that the Lord gave his life for us. And that how he was buried and that and how that he was raised the third day. And that now that we have a savior, a savior, that we have an intercessor at the right hand of God, making intercessors for the saints. And so this song should be sung constantly from day to day. And the subject of our salvation should never be exhausted. Psalms 71 and verse 15 says, My mouth will tell of your righteousness and of your salvation all day long. Verse 3 of our lesson says, Declare his glory among the heathens, his wonder among all people. Salvation by Christ here is spoken of as a work of wonder. This salvation, which was declared at first only among the Jews, but is now it is now to be declared among all nations. For we find in the book of Acts, chapter one and verse eight, where the Lord Jesus tells his apostles, "But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you." And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We need to understand that God's salvation is, is not just for a particular ethnic group. God's salvation is not just for a particular race of people or a particular country. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That this is the salvation that it should be declared to all people. To all people, not not just to those who look like us, not just to those who are our friends or, or those that who we feel comfortable with, but to all people. You know why? Because we cannot be the judge of uh, 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 one person or, or, or race or another. Because the Bible tells us that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But 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 God manifested his love towards us that while we was yet sinners, all of us, Christ died for us and, and, and he gave his life. And, and so we find in verse 4 and 5 where it states, for the Lord, that is Jehovah, keep that in mind, be pacific, be pacific, 
For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord Jehovah made the heaven. Now we have this thing where we, where where we uh, so called have this eco, uh, ecumenical service where all these different religions supposed to come together, and then we just don't offend nobody. You know, we we just all in general the Muslims, the the the, the Buddhists, and, and and the Hindus, whoever. And 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 so what we do is that we just throw it out there in a generalization. But God wants us to be pacific about who He is. Jesus wants us to be pacific about who he is. Because Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father. And in the book of Acts, it says, in the fourth chapter, it says that at the name of Jesus, that, that there is no other name given unto men whereby we must be saved. In Ephesians, I mean, excuse me, Philippians says that, that, God has given him, talking about Jesus, a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of God that Jesus is Lord. So we are to declare his name. Why? Because all these other so-called gods of the nation, they are idols. They, they, they are things that are made of stones. And so the Lord, Jehovah, God whose son is Jesus Christ, who was manifested in the flesh, is, is great and he is worthy of exalted praise and adoration. He is to be reverenced and adored above all that are called gods. Small case G-O-D-S. They had these so-called gods that people have in their mind. They have no real existence. They were and they are the creation of man's imagination. And most of them, it was and is a fact that they have no existence at all. And of those that did really exist, such as the sun, the moon, the stars, and the animals, and the spirit of departed people, which was worship, though it is true that they had an, an actual existence, yet it is also true that they had no existence as a god or were entitled to be worshipped. That word worship means to, to be in adoration of, to be, to adore. We are to be in awe of God, of his mighty presence. We are to be in awe of God, of, of, of his power, of his holiness. And so these so-called things, these other gods that these men has made up are just figment of their imaginations or like the sun and the moon and the stars. They are the creations of Jehovah, the Lord. They are creations of the Lord. For the Lord created the heavenly host. And therefore, he is the only true God and is entitled and the only one that is entitled to worship. Romans 9, excuse me, Romans 1 and verses 19 through 23 states, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. For God showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood that the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, 
and their foolish hearts were darkened. Possessing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds and four-footed four footed beasts and creeping things. So, so we see that man in his imagination, it is a figment of his imagination, all these so-called gods that, that man made them up in his mind. Or either that, they... They worship the creation, the stars and the moons and the and the stars more so than the creator himself, which is which is God, Jehovah himself. Verse six says, Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. This is that is he is great in the manifestation in his glory both in in heaven and and on earth, among his angels in heaven, and his saints on earth. God has manifested himself to the whole universe. Psalm 19 1 said that, that the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show forth his handiwork. God can be seen. God has manifested himself where he can be seen in creation himself, that an uh, individual with any inkling of, of uh, 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 just common sense who has not been blinded by the, by the tricks of Satan, he can look at the beauty of creation and, and can see that it had to be a God to create this, that it wasn't evolution, that it wasn't a big bang, that where all this just this came out of chaos, out of nothing, to a perfect order. And we, so we find in verse 10 of our lesson where it says, Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. The psalmist is declaring that to make this proclamation everywhere. For everywhere under the reign of God, the government of God will reign one day. And that the government God of God is fixed and is stable. And it is not temporary. We have seen through history where these so-called superpowers, these so-called uh, uh, empires, they had lasted maybe a few hundred years, but all of them failed. But the reign of God will be fixed, and, and that, and it will be stable, and it will not, and it will not be temporary. And He shall judge the people righteously, the people of all lands, and all the nations of the earth, that He shall judge righteously. Mankind have lived up under systems where there have been injustice all through the history of mankind, where there have been favoritism shown to people because of their wealth, favoritism shown to people because of the uh, uh, color of their skin, ill treatment shown to people because they from one place or another. No one, there, there, there is no equity. There is no fairness on this earth. Only the ones that have the might or the power or the wealth to, to, to be able to, to connive and, and, and bribe their way through life are the ones that are treated so-called fairly. But it's going to be a time coming when, when God himself, when God going to reign the earth, and, and, and it's going to be done in justice, and he will judge the people righteously. Not because of who you are, not because of who you know, not because of what you have, but he going to judge everybody. Uh, in righteousness, and so we, and, and so this is something that we all should be looking forward to. That that 
that one day that that a righteous judge will come, the righteous king will come where, where there will be truth and justice for all. We have lied so long behind the pretense of, of, of justice and righteousness, but everybody knows that's that's a force and a lie that that all all you need is a little influence and and, and, and a little wealth that that you can get by with unrighteousness and, and, and that there's no such thing as fairness for those who for the have not. Verse verse uh twelve our lesson say Let the fields be joyful. And all that is therein, then shall all the trees of the woods rejoice. We have to understand that the universe is one. The God who reigns on earth, he reigns in heaven. Therefore, it is proper to call on the universe partake in this joy that one day that God will reign, that sin will be eradicated even from the very air that's around, that, that God in his righteousness, God was going to create the earth, a new heaven and a new earth that, that this world will be renovated, will be purified by fire. We find in verse 13 of our lesson says, before the Lord, for he cometh. He cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. It was said in Peter that where it was asked, well, where is this Lord coming back? Things have remained the same. Ain't nothing changed. The beat goes on and and you know, and the world just keep right on turning. And y'all Christians, you church folks, y'all be talking about this Jesus and him coming back and 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 uh and the new heaven and the new earth. Words of that. They things been rolling on, going on the same. But we Peter answered that question say that the Lord is not slack as concerning his promises. But he is long suffering. That he is, that he is not willing that any should perish. That him, in his long suffering, what we call slackness, is that he is extending mercy because God is giving man an opportunity to turn from his wicked ways and to turn to him. But one day, one day, God patience gone give out and so and so he that is he will come and he will manifest himself as a righteous judge and he will come to reign over the world and the lord that they are talking about is the anticipated reign of the messiah the christ the anointed one of God, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Son of God, which is God manifested in the flesh. And one day, he going to reign as king of the earth. Psalms 2, verses 6 to 12 states, God speaking through the psalmist, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill. I will declare the decree. The Lord Jehovah has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathens for thy inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. And thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O you kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord, Jehovah. Serve Jehovah with fear and rejoice with trembling. 
kiss the son, lest ye he be angry and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Kiss the son. So we are to sing a new song. Blessed are all they who put their trust in the son. In the son of Jehovah. In the son of Yahweh. In the son of capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Whose son name is Jesus the Christ. For God sent his son not in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on the son is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he had not believed in the only begotten son of God. And so now this is the song that we are to sing. Sing a new song. Every day, thanking God for his mercy, for a new day. How that God has spared us to be another day. How that God has spared us and gave us the opportunity to be a witness to the mankind. To be a witness to our family. To be a witness to our acquaintance. To be a witness to all those around us about how good and merciful and loving our God is. And that one day, one day we will all sing a new song, and that is the song of redemption and praise to the Lord our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you.